Hello, Professor Kent Lee here. I have a few tips, um, answers to some of your questions about the final project, uh, and an example that I will show you uh, to give you some idea of how to do the final presentation. So first, if you didn't get feedback by email on your midterm, absolutely contact me. Uh, I send it out by email so I can give fairly detailed feedback, more than what is possible in the LMS. So if you didn't get it, absolutely you need to email me send me a couple of email addresses where I can resend it so you can get it uh, and again for the final after I grade things I will send feedback by email so make sure I have email addresses for you uh, preferably two email addresses please see the book for details about the film project in the LMS assignment I've listed several sections in the book uh, that you need to consult, that you need to look at for information about the film project uh, or TV show project and other stuff that you need to know. Uh, grading criteria are listed in the LMS assignment and also in the appendix of my book. Uh, some questions about the presentation file. Uh, of course you can use PowerPoint or you can provide me a link to your Prezi or your Google Slides Oh, you can use some other format. You can make a nice pretty brochure handout in PDF and some kind of a nice word processing or publishing program too. That's okay. Uh, if, if it's a PowerPoint, probably not more than 15 slides or 15 frames in a Prezi. So something like that would be reasonable. Not more than 15 slides. Um, a one or two page handout or brochure would be, would be enough. So you see the grading criteria. I've got about 10 or 12 grading criteria for the project. Most of the, it's listed in the LMS assignment. Most of those are based on the video file that you will upload. Now, one of them is the PowerPoint or presentation media, uh, and that's going to be based on the presentation file or PowerPoint that you submit separately, your different LMS assignment space. So that PowerPoint or presentation file, I will grade on a 10 point scale and then that goes into the overall grading rubric or grading set of grading criteria for the final project. For your video I mainly want to see you so I would prefer that you submit your presentation file separately and for the video it should mainly show you talking to the audience or to the camera. Occasionally if you want to show a PowerPoint file a PowerPoint slide in your video um, like through the, if you're recording in Zoom, you can use the share screen occasionally, but most of the video should show you, not the PowerPoint. So I would prefer that the video shows you mostly, not too much of the PowerPoint. Uh, so occasionally you can put in a, a PowerPoint slide into your video, or if you are good at video editing, you can kind of present a little like box, uh, an overlay box with your slides, you know, like this. That's fine too. If you are doing a group presentation, uh, anywhere from two to six people, uh, you're going to collaborate and all together you are going to present one idea, one proposal for a film or TV show. So that means you're going to collaborate, you're going to divide your labor, the division of labor, and you can work out, out in whatever way that works for your group and your project. You can take turns and each person presents on one, does one part of the presentation. Uh, you can take turns, go back and forth, whatever works for your group and your project. You can do uh, whatever works for you. As long as each person's participation is equal, each person should present equally. Now some details of the project, you, you, don't, you might not need to talk about everything. In the book, there, is a, there are the project guidelines and the, a list of number of things you probably need to address. That's going to depend on your particular project. Uh, for some projects, you might not need to talk about some things or you might not need to talk about some things much or at all. If you're doing a very general kind of comedy or drama, uh, that appeals to a general audience, you may not need to say much about your target audience. Uh, if you're doing a documentary, it's pretty much about uh, social value. It's one of those social value things, and it may not be as... I mean, you should talk about maybe the popular appeal, uh, 
but it's not going to be the same as like a detailed uh, explanation of the potential commercial value uh, uh, of an action film or a science fiction film. If you're doing a documentary or certain other special genres, some things are going to be different. So some points you might not need to talk about. Some points you don't need to say much. For the budget, I think for this project, a very brief discussion or overview of the budget would be fine. Uh, remember there are budget limits described in the book. It should be reasonable. But for, for the presentation, just a brief explanation of the budget. Just give some educated guesses. A, a simple breakdown, like what I'll show you in a few minutes in my sample presentation. Uh, a brief breakdown, educated guesses, educated estimates, good estimates of, of a budget, what you're asking um, from the investors. You don't have to go into detail, any detail about projected earnings or income projections, how much you expect to make. Um, especially if you're doing a TV show, it's kind of hard to do. So you might skip that or you might just uh, say, well, in the example that I'll show you, you know, based on you know how similar films have done, we expect to make maybe roughly this much at least. Uh, all of the, like if I'm asking the investors for $20,000, I'll say, okay, the first 20,000, the first $30,000 will go back to you. And then after that, a certain percentage of the profits will go to you, like 20% of our profits after that will go to you. That's all you have to do. Um, you don't really have time to look to learn about film budgets and budget project uh, income projections, so don't worry too much about that. The same thing for distribution and marketing. You just say we're going to do like you know, distribute to independent theaters and Netflix and uh, film festivals, and we'll hire somebody to do marketing and promotion, mainly through YouTube ads and SNS ads and uh, things like that. Something simple. You don't have to go into a lot of detail about that. So how you do things will depend on your project uh, and the kind of movie you're doing, the kind of group you have. So some things you might need to explain a whole lot about. Uh, you don't have to do social critique or social commentary. So a few people were confused in the last class we talked about doing social critique or social commentary. Don't have to do that. But if you do, uh, that's really cool. If you do want to do that, but you're appealing to investors, so you also have to persuade them that your film is going to be marketable. It's it's a film or show that people are going to want to watch. People are going to want to pay to come to theaters to see it. So it should have some audience appeal beyond just the social value, um, commercial potential, artistic value, uh, audience appeal. And in, in, in your presentation, uh, the unique selling points, the most persuasive parts of your pitch are probably in that sec might be in a section where you uh, talk about, okay, why we expect the film to do well, the unique selling points or the audience appeal, some section kind of like that. And I'll give you an example where the main kind of unique selling points, the main reasons are in the presentation for why you should invest in our project. So I'm going to walk you through an example. Uh, it's kind of a little different from a real pitch. For a real pitch, you know, you might go into more detail about budget and income projections and stuff like that, or provided more detailed handout or document for the investors with more detailed information. And of course, we're not going to do that for this final project. And I might have more detail about the plot than what I will show you for a real pitch, but that's okay. So I'm going to give you a demonstration, an example, and I will make these slides, Google Slides, available. I'll provide a link in the LMS uh, for you and, uh, uh, of course, to this video too. So this is just an example. I'm going to give you a sample presentation for a science fiction film proposal. And this is just an example. You're free to, of course, do whatever works for your project. This is just an example to give you some idea of how to do it. So I'm doing this because I realized, you know, through the Zoom classes, it's hard to give you, to walk you through things like I would in a regular class. It's hard to do, uh, to give you guidance and to break this up into smaller chunks that we would do bit by bit in class, where you would do group work in your groups in, in a real class. Uh, so instead I'm doing this demonstration, this example on YouTube instead. Okay, so, so 
here is my example, a sample presentation, an example to give you some ideas. Hello, and thank you for letting me come to give my presentation about my film project. My name is Clark Kant, and I'm presenting my film idea, a science fiction film called Warped. So I'm going to talk about the film details, the timeline, the potential of my film and its audience appeal, and a little bit about the budget and earnings. First, a little bit about me. As you can tell, my name is German. I am a full-time researcher at a computer science engineering lab at the University of Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. I also host a YouTube channel in my off time. It has half a million subscribers where I talk about science, technology, but also videography, video production, humanities, uh, issues of science and technology, humor, general topics like that. I've also made a few short films in the past, about three short films, which I also have on my YouTube channel and you can watch those and see my previous work. So the film details. This film called Warped is a science fiction sort of thriller. It is set in the year 2080 in Seoul. So this way it will have maybe more audience appeal to East Asian audiences and international appeal. The main characters. The characters are members of a research team, a scientific research team at a university. We'll be filming at universities in Seoul. So the main character is Zed Cochran and his girlfriend Luna Haas. And Cochran's best friend uh, named Jackie Carlos and other members of their research team. And it is a multi-ethnic and inter-ethnic cast. The main characters are, for example, mixed race characters like half Asian, half Westerner, or half Caucasian. And this way the film will have more international appeal and avoid, of course, typecasting characters based on race. So the focus of the film is not just on the action and the science, but also the character development. So it's going to have maybe rich character development. You'll people will feel for the characters and sympathize for them and care about them and be interested in what, seeing how the characters change throughout the course of the film. So the plot and the theme well, deals with time travel a bit and also the loss of identity and reality and, and as well as the issues involved in time travel and the, the people having the power to do that, to, to play, sort of play God with the power of time travel. So a little plot synopsis. So we begin the film by establishing the relationship, the, the relationship between Cochrane and his girlfriend, Luna Haas, and also Cochrane's best friend, Carlos, who is a member, fellow member of the research team. At least at first, they seem like good friends, and it seems like they have a genuine friendship. As we see later, they don't quite have that. Uh, as members of the research team, they discover some quantum effects, some quantum time effects, doing research in quantum physics in the engineering lab. Cochrane realizes that this technology can be applied for time travel, and he starts to do experiments on his own without telling members of the research team. And he's able to do first very slight, very tiny short-term time travel, like going a few minutes and a few hours into the past and doing like minor things, like little tricks. And he starts to fall in love with the sort of power that he has. And so then he starts to use this to try to maybe improve his relationship with his girlfriend, Luna Haas. And at first, maybe just going back in the past and maybe doing little things to maybe to prevent an argument that they had the previous day. And it seems to work. So he feels more kind of giddy with this sort of power. And he tries to get more ambitious. And he tries to go further back in time and then uh, actually do things to affect the timeline of his girlfriend and try to fix maybe things in her past that have uh, traumatized her or hurt her. Uh, but they don't quite work. He can change as he finds his own timeline, but he can't really change the timeline of another person. He gets into issues of causality, uh, what would happen if you could change the past, and he finds there are limits. He cannot change his girlfriend's past, and in fact, by doing so, he makes things worse. He causes more problems. He start, then starts to see interactions with himself. He goes back and tries to fix something. He makes things worse. And he goes back again to try to fix the problems he created, and things get worse. And so he starts to see multiple iterations of himself in time traveling, multiple copies of himself. And it leads to the point where he's trying to fix one thing that he, you know, he botched, messed up, 
and gets into a physical fight with his other self. Uh, at the same time, the time travel is starting to affect his health and his brain. Uh, and it shows that the time travel is not harmless. It starts to affect his brain, and he starts to start losing touch with reality, partly because of the time travel experiences and how the time travel is actually affecting his brain, his brain tissues. And he starts to question reality and his sanity, and he starts to question his identity and lose touch with reality. So he starts to not only experience physical side effects of the time travel, he starts going crazy. He starts mentally unraveling. Carlos, his best friend, and his girlfriend Haas start to realize that he is playing around with time. And she gets him to try to, tries to get him to stop. Carlos, uh, who we thought was his best friend, and there are hints throughout that he's actually uh, not so faithful as a friend. Here he actually wants to not only stop Cochrane, but he wants the time travel technology for him, his own selfish purposes. So at first, Cochrane starts out a very likable guy. His girlfriend seems kind of okay, but over time, Cochrane starts to change as he's more and more kind of drunk with the power. And Carlos wants that kind of power too. So they start to, f to have conflicts, uh, the three of them. They start to have conflicts. Uh, Haas becomes increasingly resentful of the way that Cochrane is messing up her timeline and causing problems for her. She's increasingly resentful and hurtful and they fight more and more. The more he does to try to fix things through time travel, the worse he makes the situation. This leads to eventually a three-way fight. Uh, not only the conflict leads to an actual physical fight between Cochrane, Haas, and Carlos. Uh, Cochrane, however, is unable to fight, to fight very well because he has been physically and mentally affected by the side effects of the time travel. Haas actually saves his life, prevents Carlos from killing Cochrane. At the same time, uh, Haas uh, also defeats uh, Cochrane and Carlos in the fight. And it's at this point where Haas undergoes kind of growth. She realizes she doesn't need him. She doesn't need Cochrane anymore to be a healthy person. She finds a certain kind of freedom and she becomes sort of a hero as she defeats the other guys. Ha Carlos, uh, uh, enraged by his defeat, he tries to use the time travel technology on himself and he gets too ambitious in setting the time travel controls uh, not a time machine, but more like lab equipment and, and software that he tries to program. He's over ambitious, and he, and he comes back, he comes out of the, the time travel um, equipment uh, messed up physically. He, he is so messed up physically that as a result of misusing the time travel technology, he suffers a painful, agonizing, horrible death on screen. So, Carlos dies. Cochrane fully breaks down mentally. He's taken away to a mental hospital where he has completely lost touch with reality and he is so physically sick and the doctors can't figure out how to help him mentally or physically. Haas destroys the time travel technology. She uses that technology instead for computing applications and she becomes quite famous through this. She becomes sort of the hero who wins. A rough timeline. We've got the screenplay written for this. I've written the screenplay, as I've done some films before. Uh, this is going to be filmed in Seoul using more modern university facilities, uh, such as newer facilities at Incheonde. Uh, they have a very fairly nice new campus, which will look nice for a futuristic movie like this, and we can rent them fairly quick, uh, cheaply. Most of the equipment we, equipment we have on hand, because me and my fellow uh, my colleagues have done some films before, so we don't need to buy a lot more equipment. Uh, my colleagues can do video editing and also camera work, working the cameras. So we've got most of the personnel uh, already. We only need to hire a few more. And of course, the actors uh, for this, we will recruit actors from the Hongdae area, from the Hongdae Drama School. And for the main characters, we will reach out to those actors who have starred in independent movies before either in Korea or in nearby countries, particularly multi-ethnic or inter-ethnic characters uh, for the main roles. So the timeline, we will start pre-production uh, early next year, February. Uh, the actual filming, the actual production will start uh, in 
March. We expect it to take two months uh, with our experienced actors and other personnel. So we can do it in two months. A lot of the effects will be practical effects, uh, including props, some props and uh, city models, futuristic city models. So we won't use much CGI at all. That will make it, the filming actually easier, especially post-production. We will rely more on practical effects. So the post-production will be in the summer and we expect to finish it by late July or August in time to enter this into the Busan and Shanghai Film Festivals and some other film festivals in North America, Europe and Asia. And of course in independent movie theaters beginning in Korea and also since we have of course contacts in Europe and North America we can get this film into some internet into some independent m film theaters in big cities in North America and Europe especially Germany why will this film appeal to audiences what's its potential its potential for success and that's why would you want to invest in this movie well uh, it will deal with certain uh, features and themes and tropes that will be appealing to audiences. Uh, audiences uh, do go for time travel movies. We've seen uh, success of independent movies like Looper and Primer. Uh, those have done pretty well. Primer, of course, is quite mind-bending, quite deep, quite confusing. We're not going for that level of confusing. We also see other science fiction films where audiences have responded quite well to fairly mind-bending, deep philosophical movie themes, and issues in, in science fiction movies like Interstellar and Arrival uh, and even Solaris did fairly well. We're not going for the level of mind-bendingness, not quite as deep and mind-bending as Arrival, uh, it's certainly not as confusing as Primer with its very complex time travel scenarios, but the time travel and the related issues will be compelling. It will deal with, say, what happens when people have this kind of godlike power to travel through time and change things or try to change things. No film, as far as we know, has really dealt with physical or psychological side effects of time travel. How might it affect a person's brain, mind, their physical health? Because Cochrane is going to start degenerating mentally as a result of the time travel and how it affects his mind and his sanity and his brain and his health and eventually killing Carlos by overdoing the time travel. Uh, so it deals with issues of power and humanity and technology. Uh, it's going to be fairly philosoph philosophical and, and complex, dealing with not only that, but also issues of ca causality. Other time travel movies have dealt with causality. We're going to do it in a different way, where the main character can maybe alter little things in his timeline, but he can't alter another person's timeline um, uh, except to make things worse for the person. So there's going to be a focus on the character development also. That's another main appeal. Cochrane starts out as a very likable, intelligent, witty, lovable guy who's faithful to his girlfriend. His, his intentions towards his girlfriend are quite well-intentioned mis but misguided. She uh, seems like kind of a nice person but has a troubled past. Well, he wants to be sort of a hero to her and, and fix her, which seems noble, but actually it's quite selfish because he wants to play a hero. He wants to be the hero. And in doing so, he fails to fix her timeline, to fix her life. It makes things worse. Uh, and again, he unravels mentally and degenerates mentally, psychologically, but also morally. As he becomes drunk with the power to try to change things, he becomes increasingly selfish and aggressive and hostile uh, and egotistical uh, to the point that his girlfriend comes to hate him. His girlfriend starts out kind of okay uh, we're thinking, wh why does he love her? Well, she's not that incredibly likable or friendly. She seems a bit cold at first. But throughout the course of the film, well, she reali we realize that at first she's dependent upon her boyfriend. But as sh she uh, starts to fight more with Cochrane, she becomes more independent. In the end of the movie, she realizes her that she can be independent and free without depending on another person to kind of save her or help her. Uh, so she learns self-esteem and self-confidence and nobility by not only saving Cochrane's life, but destroying the technology and using the technology or destroying the time travel technology and using the quantum technology for entirely good purposes and becoming a good human being. So she undergoes character growth while Cochrane undergoes a character 
degeneration, sort of like a classic tragic hero in a lot of uh, epic hero stories. Uh, then there's the three-way conflict between Cochrane and Haas and Carlos. Um, and Carlos, there are hints that you might not notice at first to, towards the beginning that Carlos, seemingly a good friend, seemingly a likable guy, good friend of Cochrane, is actually kind of selfish. And that comes out more and more throughout um, the progression of the movie until Carlos betrays Cochrane and tries to kill him. And Haas saves Cochrane's life, and Cochrane ends up dying as a result of his selfishness. So the complex character interplay is going to be appealing to audiences. So it's appealing because of the, the, the themes that it deals with. It's compelling because of the interesting co plot. It's fairly complex and sophisticated, but not too confusing for audiences. And the characters that are likable, and the audience will feel sympathy or empathy towards the characters. And the changes in the characters is something that they are going to res the audience, I think, will appreciate. Here's the brief budget. We're going to rent university uh, lab settings like Intunde uh, and other uh, fairly modern university facilities that will look kind of futuristic. Uh, a little bit for equipment and props. Uh, we're going to pay our actors well. We're going to pay them really well. We want really good independent experienced actors from independent, past independent movies. And uh, daily production expenses, okay, like transportation and food and uh, some equipment costs and such like that, making props, uh, some props for the lab and, and such, but mostly physical props and physical practical effects. Uh, we will spend some money on marketing, promotion, distribution, getting it into independent movies in Korea, uh, perhaps China, uh, perhaps Japan, also uh, some nor North American cities where we have some connections and of course here in, in Germany. We expect a total budget of about 44 million Korean won, and uh, I will front 10 million of that, and I'm asking for 34 million uh, from investors. And based on how similar movies, similar independent movies have done in the past, like Primer and Looper, uh, we expect to make, uh, conservatively, we expect to make several times that uh, from ticket sales, uh, and also in Netflix. Uh, we will market and promote it through YouTube ads and SNS ads. Very simply, so we expect to make back um, several times this amount fairly easily, fairly conservatively. So naturally, the first 40 million will go back to you, and after that, about 25% share of the profit of the profits beyond that will go to you, the investors, uh, and the rest will fund maybe our future movie pro projects. And so this is not only me, but this is a team of some of my uh, people who have worked with me in the past, uh, experience. I have two people who are experienced uh, camera people and video editors and sound designers uh, to help with the post-production phase. So that is my project. I thank you for your listening. I will send you also some extra documents with more details, especially about uh, budget details and other de and, and, and such. And uh, you see my contact information here. So if you have questions, I welcome your questions now, or you can email me, email me later. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your decision. Thank you. Okay, hopefully you kind of enjoyed that. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of what to do and how to do it. Adapt it to your own purposes, your own project, the nature of your project. I will be available during the, the week before your project is due. I'll be around. Uh, I'll put in an announcement in the LMS about maybe when you can contact me through Zoom if you need to. Uh, especially the, the first part of the week, uh, or you can arrange for an appointment later or come see me. So please, if you have questions, if you have more questions, please talk to me, make an appointment or arrange a Zoom meeting or make an appointment to see me. So please contact me if you have questions. So that's it for this semester. I look forward to watching your videos, your projects, and good luck on your finals. And I hope to see some of you or most of you next semester. Take care.